How to be good at NHL 24 on PlayStation. Let's get right into it. How to score. Note before we start, this is not a button or a controller tutorial. I will give you some button tricks you might not know, but this is more so about me just talking about how I think you should play this game to win games. Also remember, there might be patches this year which changes some of the stuff I will tell you. So keep that in mind. So scoring close to the net and on breakaways, I recommend going to the backhand side rather than the forehand side. Backhanders are faster this year and a bit smoother to pull off and seem to go in better. Forehand shots seem a bit more clunkier and kinda slower than before. You can still score them but they're not as effective as before. Overall what I recommend doing close to the net is trying to do two or three moves before you shoot it. What I personally do a lot is go backhand forehand backhand or just forehand backhand or then from the forehand side do the same forehand backhand forehand also close to the net don't be afraid to shoot it five holes five holes are pretty effective this year if you can get the goalie moving side to side and then shoot it five hole while he's moving it's a surprisingly good way to score this year and it's fun <laughs> one timers forever have been the best way to score in NHLs, and it's no different in this game but you need to get the one timer off close to the net, try to get the cross crease pass as close to the goalie as possible. Because the one-timers farther away, the goalies are really good at saving them. But if you can get the pass off as close to the goalie as possible, the goalies rarely get to the cross crease in time. So what to do instead of the one-timer farther away, Take the puck from the pass and shoot the puck to the corner you passed from. The goal is really outplay the first one-timer and this way you will score a lot of goals. This is probably the way I score the most goals in NHL 24. Also snipes and just regular shots, slap shots, wrist shots farther away from the net are really effective. They're way harder than in the past and the goalies have changed quite a bit so I feel like different shots go in on the goalies this year. People have been struggling to score, but I think it's more so because people are used to doing the same stuff that doesn't work in this NHL. Don't be afraid to shoot shots you usually wouldn't take and see what happens. You might be able to find some ways to score that nobody else would. Overall a tip on sniping and just scoring in general. Try to keep the goalie moving. If you're shooting while the goalie is moving or just create some movement to the goalie overall with passes or puck movement or just a little stick handle before you shoot, it goes a long way in scoring goals. Kinda like in real life, if the goalie is settled into a shot, it usually won't go in. So don't just straight up skate towards the goalie. I shoot a lot of point shots this year, especially if the goalie is screened or I have guys at the net. Again, in these, I've noticed if you can get the goalie moving and shoot it from the point, or like I said, if you have guys at the net, you can get tips, rebounds, the shots can go in on their own, etc. There's really not a clear meta how to score this year. There's like a lot of different ways you can kind of score, but nothing like truly better than the other. So don't be afraid to be a creative. Also, as you might know, lacrosses are really powerful this year. So don't be afraid to go for the lacrosse goal behind the net if your opponent gives you the space. With the new total controls this year, you can do the lacrosse with only one press of a button. That's triangle on PlayStation. So yeah, it's pretty insane. And the final tip on scoring is the new pressure system. If you didn't know, when you get the pressure meter on this year, your players get a boost in attributes, the other team gets some money and their energy goes by quicker and also this year goalies have fatigue which is increased when you have the pressure on as well so when you have the pressure active I would recommend shooting it from absolutely everywhere you might get some rebounds opponents players are slow to react to them goalies might be falling to the ground when their energy is low goalies are way easier to beat in whatever type of shot when they're under pressure so especially when you have the pressure on just go for different looks to end the how to score section i have three kind of a secret goals to show you first goal is this weird backhand shot while you're shooting it. How you do this is hold R2 and kinda go for the toe drag shot and your player kinda teleports the puck to their backhand before they shoot it. This gives your player a different angle to shoot the puck from. It's not realistic at all but it's highly effective and the goalies have been pretty confused. I've seen a lot of players scoring this way and uh, yeah it creates some good movement for the goalie as well. Another really overpowered goal is from the side of the net. This goal only works when the goal is in the VH position hugging the post. When you're moving with your player away from the corner, just when the goalie comes off this animation, you shoot the puck and the goalie kind of freezes and it's kind of ridiculous how easy this goal is. The final goal I want to show you is this back skate to the middle 
from the corner and then just shoot it far side. It's one of the most effective ways to score for me and it's really easy. I don't use the backskate a lot anymore. It's highly nerfed in this NHL so this is the only time we're talking about it. But pressing the L2 button and cutting from the corner has been pretty effective for me. Now you know how to score. So how do you actually create the space to get these scoring opportunities? First of all, I recommend every one of you to learn just a couple simple digs. The simplest moves are the one touch digs where you just tap L1 and your player does a quick one touch dig to the side you have your left stick towards when you tap L1. My personal favorite and the move that is really effective is the between the legs dig. With a left-handed player you do this putting the puck behind your back with the right stick holding L1, releasing the right stick and just tapping right on your right stick. And that's it, you know how to do the between the legs. And the best way to create space of course is by passing the puck. Be smart with the passes, if you see a guy in a better scoring position where you are at, pass it. Puck moves faster than the player, keep it in mind, try to keep the puck moving. When you're in scoring areas, try to learn the perfect times to go for leagues, when to pass it, when just to hold on to the puck, you know. The simple stuff. This just comes by playing the game more and more and more. It's super tough to just teach this, but there's all the tools I can basically give you. <laughs> just a note on the passing. Icon passing is brand new this year. So you can still pass the old way by holding R2 and just releasing it and your player passes where your left stick is. Or you can use the new icon passing. The icons pop up when you hold down the pass button and it gives you options on the icon pass and a secret tip for you guys if you didn't know this let's say here i want to pass to the triangle button i press triangle if i press triangle twice player i'm passing to automatically passes it back so you can create some really nice passing plays with the new icon passing. This is something I'm trying to learn as well. You can also be really creative with this. For example here I can press triangle and square back to back and then my player does tic-tac-toe <laughs> on its own. I personally haven't gotten really used to the icon passing yet but this is an area of the game where you can get really creative. Passing was I would kinda recommend a mix between the old passing system and the icon passing. A really underrated way to create space is the new reverse hit. This is something I see rarely anybody use, even myself I have trouble implementing this new thing to my gameplay but it's highly effective. You do the reverse hit by pressing the right stick down on the total controls and pressing X on the skill stick. How to defend? First of all defense is all about reading your opponent and trying to figure out what he's trying to do and countering that. But the best tools in this game to use defensively is the pow check and the new power hit. Pow checks have always worked in NHL games. There's two ways to pow check. You can either just tap R1 and your player automatically tries to pow check towards the puck. You don't even have to aim it. Or you can hold down R1 and use the defensive skill stick, which you can aim manually using your right stick. I kinda use the mixture of both, but be careful with the pow checks. Since the last NHL, when you pow check, your player actually loses speed. So even though the pow check is really accurate, if you miss it the first time, don't start spamming it, because your player loses speed like crazy when you press it. Then opponents will get past you easily. Try to time the pow checks right when you're in front of the player and see the puck. Also, don't press the pow check when you're behind opposing players. It's so easy to get penalties this way. Hitting wise, the new power hit is absolutely awesome and easily the best way to hit. You do this with the new controls by pressing circle and with the skill stick pressing down and up on the right stick. But again, be careful with the power hit as well. It's really easy to outplay yourself if you miss this hit, but if you hit it, you usually get the puck from your opponent. Defensively, hip checks are also really good. I personally don't like to use it, but it is effective. Also, just by pressing up on the right stick, you do this tiny bump, which helps you in certain situations without losing momentum. If you're defending with a smaller player with not great hitting attributes and your opponent is coming down with a bigger player with a lot of strength, don't go and hit him, because obviously nothing happens. <laughs> really see who your defensive player is and then decide what kind of action you want to take. Pass intercepts are pretty simple. Just try to be in the passing lane as close to the player your opponent is trying to pass to as possible. You don't even have to press anything, just try to be in the passing lane. If you're a little bit off position or behind the player your opponent is trying to pass to, then you can try to save the goal with a pow check or a dive or a manual block with the L1. One tip I want to give you guys, I think this is defensive related. So many players don't know how to dump the puck this year. <laughs> so this year, the longer you hold R1, the harder the dump will be. So if you just press R1 for a short while and then dump it, the dumps are not hard at all. Also, just while holding R2 at the same time when you dump it. That's another way to get 
like a forward dub. Overall on defense, I recommend you guys to be pretty aggressive because of the new pressure system. We just touched on how good it is. You don't want your opponent to get it active. The last tip I have for you guys on defense is you know how to score now. You know the most effective ways to score. So try to take away those plays, the most effective plays. Play with the percentages. If your opponent is taking low quality shots, let him have it. He won't score low quality shots. The more you play, the more you realize which shots actually go in and which not. Let your opponent shoot 30 times from a bad angle and then complain about not scoring on 30 shots, right? Let him do it. Also, be really alert on which player your opponent is controlling. If your opponent is controlling a McDavid, of course he has better shooting attributes, he has a better chance at scoring goals you need to defend him a lot tighter than somebody like <laughs> Ryan Reeves for example like obviously this is the same for you actually in, in offense when you or your opponent is using better players you can shoot it way more in more situations and you're just way more dangerous than with lower overall players how to play as a goalie this is for 1v1 players I won't teach you how to play world of chill as a goalie this is for 1v1 players you only need to know how to play goalie in certain situations like breakaways shootouts and you can even take control of your goalie manually during a game situation and surprise your opponent. So first of all, how to control your goalie during a game situation is holding L1 and pressing X at the same time. And in breakaways, what I personally use a lot is the flying pole check, which really gets your opponents off guard. You can do the flying pole check by pressing up on the left stick and pressing square. I use this almost every game. And same in shootouts and penalty shots. It's really effective. If you don't want to use the flying pole check in penalty shots, I would recommend before the opponent is even coming down, choose a side and kinda commit to that side even before your opponent is coming down. If you're trying to follow especially better players on penalty shots, it's really hard to kinda tell which side they are going to. So yeah, just make that decision before they come down. Also, as a goalie, you basically just need to control your guy with the left stick and nothing else. While pressing R2, you can put the goalie down yourself, but that opens the top of the net. I don't personally think you, you need to use this. If you want to be really creative with playing as a goalie, you can start using the manual goalie on taking away snipe goals or glitch goals or whatever. That starts to become really risky, but you have the option to do that. How to play smart. Final point on gameplay. I will keep this short. Play smart. When you have the lead, you can take less risks, play more defensive, don't give your opponent free chances. And when you're down, the opposite. You need to take more chances, play more aggressive, manage the game correctly. Also, if you see during a game your opponent is giving you something all the time, he's maybe not covering the back post at all, he's maybe not covering your go-to snipe at all, you can just go for that play all the time and like really abuse it. If you want to win games consistently, that's what you need to do. Every player has some weaknesses and you need to take advantage of that. Same for you on defense. If you see your opponent is going for the same plays every time, he doesn't have any variety, maybe he's only scoring one-timers up close, then you're just in defense covering the one-timer. You don't need to do anything else. Use your head. It might sound simple, but I'm shocked always to see how little players actually think about stuff like this. Here's my current strategies. Feel free to copy them. I think you need to be really aggressive in this game because of the pressure system. You want to have the pressure system on your side and not play against it. So be aggressive on defense, in the neutral zone, etc. That's what I would do. What I always recommend to everybody is figure out the strats what worked for your game style. But this is what works for me and uh, here you can see everything. If you want to know what every strategy in the game actually does, I did a video about this 3-4 years back. It's called EA Sports NHL Strategy Guide. I linked to you guys the video in the description. I don't want to do the same stuff again because nothing has changed. You just have to deal with my English which was even worse at the time. <laughs> Setting wise, I play with the overhead camera. Uh, here's all my visual settings for those interested. Controller setting wise, I have everything off. Don't use auto backskate, guys. It's so horrible. Sometimes when you're skating next to your opponent, your player is just skating backwards and letting your opponent to get by you. Don't use the auto backskate. It, it's only a disadvantage. I do actually play with the new total controls. I think it's really similar to the skill stick, but it just gives you the added options to do some easier digs with the face of buttons. The hardest time I've had adjusting is that I need to change lines by pressing the arrows. Other than that, I've liked it. All of these settings I'm showing you, it's just personal preference at the end of the day. I personally don't use the vibration on the controller, but that's personal preference. I used it a couple years back, but I've just recently turned it off. Pass assist is at 100. Take all the assist the game gives you. Trust me, you won't pass better with like a 90 pass assist than 100. You just won't. 
The more you have on the pass assist, the more room for error the game gives you for aiming your passes. Finally, how do I set up my team, whether it's hot or online versus? I always have my right-handed players in the left side of the ice, so I can cut to the middle and have the shot ready or have the one-timers. You are just way more dangerous in NHL games this way, in my opinion. I usually do like to play with left-handed centers over right-handed centers, but that's personal preference. Always have your best face of guys taking the draws. Defensively, same as offensively, right-handed players on the left side and left-handed on the right side for the same reason as in offense and for the goalies i just usually play with the tallest goalies possible overall has never really truly mattered on goalies in nhls it's more so about the size of the goalie there's my fool how to be good at nhl 24 tutorial hope you learned something hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe and have a great day and see you next time PlayStation.